Today's the day I sail offshore to Miami. This will be my first offshore trip in this sailboat. And it's about 120 miles after sail from Fort Pierce uh, to the south part of Miami, which will be easy to get in. And uh, I'm just catching the end of the outgoing tide. So I gotta hurry. I don't wanna miss it. Otherwise I gotta wait till this afternoon to leave. But I didn't wanna leave at the most intense part of the tide because man, looks like it gets, could get some, uh, some big waves out there, but let's get going. Just gonna undo this dock line. Let's pull this thing a little closer so I can jump on it. Come on. That'll work. Okay, give it a little throttle. And now heading towards the channel. It's about 7.30 a.m. Nice morning for a sail. The wind is just picking up. It should strengthen as we get away from the shore a little bit and pick up to maybe maybe uh, 15 gusts into 20 knots. So nice wind for a downwind passage. Gonna be coming out of the north, northwest. And a huge thanks to all my friends at the Fort Pierce Yacht Club here. You guys were awesome hosts. I stayed for a whole week and I got so much uh, windsurfing and wing foiling in. That was exactly the goal of this trip and I think I'll have to be able to do even more when I get to Miami. We'll be using mainly, I think, the jib sail today. In this video, I'm gonna experiment with uh, getting a sponsor. So we're gonna have uh, Surfshark VPN sponsoring the video and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how long this wing on wing kind of lasts <coughs> with the two jibs. Going pretty quick though. Here's a look at the forecast with my favorite forecasting app, Luck Grib here. Uh, actually, this is the, uh, the the current, so that's the Gulf Stream out there, obviously going against us. And then there's the wind, which is going with us, so we, we definitely wanna stay out of the Gulf Stream because that, that could make some big, uncomfortable waves out there, and obviously we wanna be going de uh, south. As I mentioned before, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. So thank you, Surfshark. I get offers all the time for sponsorships for companies to sponsor my videos. And I usually just ignore them because they don't seem really relevant at all to, to the sailing. But when I saw the Surfshark one, I thought, hey, that's kind of, that's kind of relevant because I'm, I'm always sailing to different countries and I get a lot of use out of VPN. So I downloaded the app and it looks like, it looks like a pretty good VPN. Um, in the past, I've used the VPNs, like when, for example, when I was working in Shanghai, uh, China's internet's pretty oppressive and you can't like uh, access a lot of different stuff and content. And uh, you just switch your VPN back to a place, uh, maybe your home country or US, and uh, then you all of a sudden, all that stuff is accessible again. Uh, another good, great use for VPNs was when I signed up for YouTube Premium. It was like 30 bucks or something in the, in the US, but switching my IP address to Argentina drop that price down to about a dollar a month and so that's a huge savings right there and if you want, want to save some on the surfshark vpn there's some i think there's like a, a promotional code they have with my name in it and you can you can give that a shot uh and uh, i get they also have some cool security features which i'm going to be looking into since there's always you know people trying to scam me and hack my youtube account so i think it could be a pretty pretty cool service so definitely check it out now let's get uh, back to the sailing
nice ride so far. I think the waves are going to pick up a little bit as we get into the Gulf Stream and maybe this afternoon. But I'm enjoying it now. Nice rolling motion. A good time to take a nap, actually. I put the main sail up just kind of as to steady us a little bit. It's actually a reef, so it doesn't block the, the jibs as much. That's keeping us on a better course. Not quite as rolly motion. I had to reposition the autopilot because I originally had put it a little bit further than it was recommended um, and it didn't have enough steering authority. I did that because the way the, the tiller was, like it was really low down here. But I, I solved the problem by using a rope to pull the tiller upwards and then using the bungee on there. So now it's doing pretty good. I had the mainsail up for a while to kind of steady us, but now we're just going a little bit too deep downwind and the wind's picked up enough that uh, it's holding the, the head sails out. So things are going pretty well. Now I'm going to go back and finish my, my nap. We're cruising along at about four knots. I feel like we're moving faster through the water though. So maybe we're a little, in a little bit of that Gulf Stream current. Should probably start heading a little closer to shore soon or at some point. I think once I get around uh, West Palm Beach, then I'll start kind of hugging the coast a little more. Got a real craving for some hard boiled eggs. So that is what I'm going to make today. Start the fireball stove. So just notice our speed slowed way down and we are definitely in the Gulf Stream. So we gotta get closer to shore. You can see the waves are getting steeper too because the waves are going against the current, which makes them steeper. So I wasn't just about to put up the Yankee sail, um, but I think we want all the power we can now that we're this current. We're going about a knot, even though we're doing about five knots through the water, but we're doing one knot over, over the ground. So we're just gonna drive. Okay, I pulled down the jib. I'm gonna put it in its bag. Man, the things are picking up. Things are getting kind of crazy out here. We need to get out of the Gulf Stream now. We are we are actually stationary, even though. Yeah, we need to get out of here. Then get closer to shore. So I sorted out my little uh, stumble into the Gulf Stream. I was actually about maybe three, three and a half miles offshore and just like slammed right into the Gulf Stream and we were going backwards and the waves started getting real steep. I had a four knot current there um, and I clawed my way back towards shore. And now we're about half a mile offshore. We're still fighting a little bit of a current. At about a mile we, offshore, we were going against a, maybe a one and a half to two and a half knot current. Uh, now at half a mile, it's dropped down a little bit more. And the, the, more importantly, the waves have uh, gotten a little smaller. Uh, they got really steep when I was out in the Gulf Stream uh, and it just got kind of crazy. I mistakenly, I, like the wind was starting to pick up and I, I took the Genoa down. I was gonna swap it for the uh, the Yankee sail because I thought the wind might get strong overnight. But actually, as I was taking it down, the wind actually kind of died, and that jib wasn't enough to pull us uh, through the the rough water. So we were just we were just going like rocking so hard, everything got thrown over around on the boat. But. Uh, I suffered through that, put the jib back up, and now we're we're all good again. And we're doing about uh, maybe two knots, which I was really hoping to be doing four on this passage. So it looks like might have an extra day. I was considering going inside 
the ICW, but I think now that I'm close to shore, uh, I'm just gonna stay stay, uh, stay offshore. You know, if I can stay a half mile offshore, um, but not go inside, because there's 10 drawbridges that only open on certain times, and I think that's just gonna be a real hassle with my setup right now. So hopefully the waves don't get too big when the wind picks up tomorrow and it goes okay. I think if we can stay out of the Gulf Stream current, we'll be okay. So we, we made some progress last night. Uh, we were doing between two and three knots, and now, now we're up to four for a little bit. So I think we might be getting out of the, the Gulf Stream finally. I've been super close to shore, like between a half a mile and a mile. And that means I have to pay really close attention. So I did my like 10 minute sleep schedule where I wake up every 10 minutes and uh, just make sure the boat's on course. Sometimes I do a little longer. What I do is I kind of measure the distance between uh, me and the nearest thing I could run into and then I divide it by like the the fastest speed the boat could possibly do and give myself a little bit of a buffer and then I can sleep for that long so that works pretty good although sometimes I'll screw up the math and then I'll say all right I'll wake up like after it when my alarm goes off and then I'll see the object like that I just sailed by and I'm like darn Sam uh, tend to do that when I get more sleep deprived but generally it works pretty good Darker blue. Sails are still looking good. I get a little worried about this big Genoa because it's a little bit thinner material. Especially when the wind picks up. But it's holding up okay. We covered 71 miles in the first 24 hours of this trip which isn't great, but considering uh, our situation with the current, that's not too bad. I was thinking I'd be able to get 100 miles, but uh, there's 40, no, not 40 left. Yeah, about 40 miles left to go actually. So maybe this evening we'll get in, maybe around eight.
off of West Palm Beach now. There's a lot more. There's a lot more traffic around here. A lot of boats just kind of anchored or drifting. I guess fishing mostly. So I gotta kind of watch out for them now. Plus I'm close to shore too, so I gotta watch out for that. But only 37 more miles to go. Decided to finish this passage. So we got a leak down here. Let's take a look at it. In the rudder. Ways to go to get to, we gotta get kind of the south side to Biscay Bay, Biscay Bay, whatever. I got the boat up to six knots now. Anchorage. I got us nice and close, and uh, there's a lot of boats. But we're I'm pulled in, stuck in the front row here. And there's like a dock in there, and it looks like the anchor's holding nice, not not too deep here. There's our scope. No idea how much anchor line I have, but it seems like it's enough. Slept so good. After uh, like two days of no sleep on that sailing trip, it was awesome. I already went out wing sailing, just been cruising back and forth here in the anchorage on the foil hydrofoil board. It's been awesome. I'm exhausted. So here's my attempt to try to film myself on the wing foil. It's like this kind of blow up sail, and you and you use it on a hydrofoil board, so you can kind of ride above the water. It's really fun it's, and it's been kind of a challenge to learn how i'm starting to get the hang of it i also tested out this this sail bag thing i've never used one of these it works worked pretty good with it's with the new zipper so i think i'll i'll probably just paddle over that dock over there uh paddle board into shore i'm just gonna tie up at this uh dock here it doesn't suck me under it. There we go. It's like a fishing pier. I'll just tie it up for that tree. I got a lock too, because we're in Miami. All right, there we go. Locked it to the tree. Should be safe there. I'm kind of thirsty because I had, was drinking the water from my tanks, but then there was some stuff floating in it. It kind of weirded me out, so I haven't drank any water for the last couple of days. I'm really dehydrated. Really nice park here. This would be a good trail to go for a run on in the morning. So I found my GoPro, but I didn't bring the cases. They're all back in my boat. So I'm making up a camera tether so maybe I can film myself while I'm filming because I'd love to show it. It's really fun to show the foiling. All right, so just jumped in the water. The DJI action camera, apparently not waterproof. That sucks. I thought it was. So I soaked my GoPro in uh, rice all night and that still isn't working. It's the light comes on, see? But then nothing else. 
nothing else works. I'll have to get a new one of those. But actually, I had this this uh, little Insta GoPro, and it's uh, this one actually just finally started working. It was broken before, but I whacked it on the side, and, it, and then the little light came on. Uh, it, it's having trouble charging. It, that was the thing, but now it's finally working. So. I actually do have a mount for that one and it's waterproof and I can put it on my hat so I can use that now. So there it is, it's kind of a crazy setup. You ever seen a GoPro set up like this? I've got three eyes. I got a, a nose on my camera on my nose. So hopefully I can get a, a good angle to show everything. Let's see how it works with the wing foil. All right, that went, that went all right. The footage wasn't great. You couldn't really get the effect of being on the foil, I don't think. So while I'm charging up this camera again, I'm, I'm reconfiguring it with the, the selfie stick and the, the hat camera mount lashed to uh, the boom on the wing foil. So maybe you can actually like, hopefully you'll be able to see me uh, on the board and you'll be able to get the effect of like flying up on the foil and maybe even you can see the foil like sliding through the water. I can maybe somehow attach it to the board too, but I'm a little worried if it goes underwater, I might just kind of rip this thing apart. I'm gonna do a uh, dry test before I put the camera in there just to be safe. I don't wanna lose two cameras in one week. So here you can see my camera sticking off the front of the boom there. And it stayed on pretty good, but I had to make a few changes. So it, it would be a little tighter with the camera. Okay, now time for the real deal. So we got the camera up there on the, it's just tied with some ropes on the boom. And here I'm, I'm pumping, trying to get up on the, on the hydrofoil and I'm up, I'm out of the water. And uh, I, I actually did two shots, two sessions. And this one, I accidentally had the camera turned on like horizon stabilization mode. So that kind of crafted it in a little tight, uh, but this, the shot was still pretty cool. I think it's the best one, the best one I've got yet. And oh, I'm up on the foil again. It just gets, it, you get so smooth when you get up on the foil. It's so much fun. And uh, you can't really, Again, I think I have another shot later where it's a little bit wider view so you can see the foil just gliding through the water. It's like a manta ray kind of. And uh, I'm really having to work it, work the sail a lot, uh, sheeting in and out um, because it's real real gusty. I'm, I'm on the lee side of an island, so the wind goes away and then I have to pump with my legs to stay up. And then it comes in a gust and I have to ease the sail out so I don't get blown over. Uh, when I take the, the, the board a little further offshore, uh, it's actually, I, all I have to do is just, you know, hold the sails steady and it just like can take me wherever I went really fast. Although this is kind of a big um, uh, underwater wing, it, so it, it actually gets up on the foil pretty, at pretty slow speeds. Uh, I'd like to try a smaller um, hydrofoil at some point and so I could maybe uh, go a little faster. But this is good for learning, I think, because I, I can get up without having to go too fast. It's just it's a lot of fun, and I I do kind of enjoy the challenge, you know, of working the the gust and things. Oh, here's a little bit of a neater, a better shot where you can see my the board. You can see the foil going through the water. Ah, oh, he's getting up on the foil. Yep, I think it's out of the water now. You get, the depth doesn't come through so well. Like I'm actually a foot or two out of the water, I think here. I have to get some shots from from an outside perspective next. Oh, it's so fun to carve on this thing. It turns so good. 
the faster you go, like the more sensitive it gets. And then here I'm on the other, tacking on the other side to go back towards my boat again. And it's nice because the the foil doesn't need so much power to get up out of the water, so it doesn't it doesn't kind of wear your arms out as much like a windsurfer where you need to have a harness to do it for any length of time. It's just a gentle pull kind of to get up on the foil. You can even do it with one hand sometimes. There we go. Yeah. No! Almost, almost. Ahí va, ahí va, ahí va. <laughs> Such an epic wind surfing session today. I, 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 I think I was going for like five hours with a couple breaks in between. I started at like nine and now it's like four o'clock. Boats just zoom by here. Zoom. I, I, every day I get like a new kind of progression in my skill. It's so satisfying. Today I, I really kind of got the hang of pumping because I was doing this kind of like porpoising pumping where I was going to go up and up and down. But then today I kind of learned if I could like just let the feet go together, which is like an up and down motion. And then that really was the trick. And now whenever the wind dies or like I kind of lose my balance, I can just like pump through it and I can stay up on the hydrofoil even longer. I had some rides that I swear were like 10 minutes long. Winds are just perfect last last three or four days. I've been having so much fun. Looks like the wind's gonna lighten up. So I, I really crammed it all in as much as I could today. I met up with uh, some, some boat sailed by and they recognized me somehow. I don't know how people recognize me. Uh, just some guy on YouTube, but uh, I, I went and uh, wing foiled over to them and got them to get me get some footage of me. That was so, so I got some, some video too. And I think some of my, my GoPro shots are gonna be pretty cool also. I, I saw like three Portuguese man of wars and they, sometimes those kind of freak me out a little bit. I really don't want to get stunned by one. Luckily they're easy to see. They got this like bright purple like plasticky looking head and they kind of float on the surface. But I've never gotten stung by one so far. So today I'm gonna motor into No Name Harbor and I'll just spend the day on shore. So here we are. Got this nice protected No Name Harbor. It's eight bucks to tie to the wall only during the day. Thanks for watching and a special thanks to all the patrons and people who have uh, contributed to support the channel and also um, Surfshark for sponsoring this, this video. Um, I'm currently in Miami and I'm going to be sailing to the Keys next. Uh, so I'll see you guys on that next video.